Hi, I'm Colleen with Mural Maker and More. Today we're going to do a real fun painting tutorial on pomegranates. One that's closed and one that's open with a few perils, the little pomegranate seeds popping out. So let's get started. We're going to do two pomegranates today. One in front is uh, split open so that we can have some of the perils or the little berries that are so common with the pomegranates, and then just a whole one behind. First thing we're going to do is fill in the split that the pomegranate does, sometimes even on the tree. And I'm just going to use lemonade, the light yellow, to fill that in. I'm using a bright shade of red for these. You can use whatever tone of red you would like. This is called cardinal red, and it's going to seem a little bright until we add some of the shading. I'm going to go ahead and start on the back pomegranate. And you do want it to be fairly um, opaque, covered, see, uh, when you're done. So it might take a coat or two, depending on how heavy the, your brush strokes are. But you want to kind of mark where the front pomegranate starts and the back one ends. And then we're just going to go ahead and base coat the entire back pomegranate and then the front pomegranate in. You might want to switch to a little liner brush when we get to this, but I'll show you that in a minute. Now I'm going to do the little point on each end of the pomegranate. And it's easier with a smaller brush, a liner brush. This is a uh, number two liner. And that way you can either come to the point this way, or you can pull down whatever works for you. You just want a few little points. And it looks awfully bright red right now, but we're going to change that in a few minutes and add a little shading after we do some highlighting. On the bottom one, the one that's open, we're going to actually show some of the points in the back too. So we're going to go ahead and create um, a red line right where the opening is. And we're going to make almost twice as many points on this one. And then some will wind up being in back and some will wind up being in front. And I'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute. So just go ahead. Before we get to the shading of the pomegranates, which is going to make sense of one in front and one in back, we're going to add a little bit of highlighting with that same lemonade yellow. And all we're going to do is a little curve on the front one, two little curves. It's just going to give it a little uh, fullness. And we're going to cover this up, top coat it in a minute, so don't worry about it looking strange. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing on the pomegranate and back. Just something so it doesn't look just like a red ball. It's going to look a lot more like an actual piece of fruit. You want to make your lines nice and curved, and you do want them to be fairly opaque because we are going to top coat them. So you want a good coating of the yellow on it. And you can see as it dries how it starts to be absorbed by the paper. So you want to go ahead and add an extra layer if it's not real bright. Once you're highlighting, with the lemonade has dried, you want to apply a top coat of the same cardinal red right over it. You want to make sure it's dry, otherwise it'll start to blend. I'll show you. I've got one area up here that is not completely dry. I'll show you what happens. It starts to kind of smush together, and you don't get the same <clears throat> clarity that you want in your highlighting. This is also a good time if you have any pale areas, 
you can go ahead and cover that up too with your uh, cardinal red. If you want to leave a little bit of the lemonade peeking through, go ahead. That's going to add an extra layer of dimension to the fruit to get an idea where it's going. And then we're going to come back and shade with um, barnyard red. And the barnyard red is just kind of a brownish red. And that will give it even another layer of dimension. Okay, a couple of areas where we're going to start the shading. We're going to start the shading on the full pomegranate behind the front pomegranate. So that it looks like this one is coming forward because we're going to push that one back with the shading. That's one area. Also in the little curvature, we're going to do it. And then just a few strokes coming up. And then we'll come down and do a few strokes here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, right on the opposite side of the back of that front pomegranate. And when that dries and the sheen dissipates, you'll be able to see now what's happening. Plus it kind of tones down the red. The barnyard red has a little bit of brown in it, so it kind of tones down this bright red. Gives you a little bit more natural appearance to the pomegranate. Then I'm just going to pull some up the body of the pomegranate. Not so much in the front. In the front, I kind of want that to be bright. Brighter red. A little bit there, but more. And then once it dries, you'll be able to tell, do I need to add more, less? If you add too much, come back with your cardinal red, and you get to decide how bright you want to make the pomegranates. Okay, we also want to put right here in this curve. It's just going to make the curve a little more pronounced. And if you have a marked line here where, of where you've shaded, you want to kind of get rid of that. So we might have to actually pull some up the body so that it doesn't look circular that way. You want it coming up, not round. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing on this one. Now with the liner brush and the barnyard red, I'm going to go and do some of these uh, pointy parts. I don't know what they're called. I call them pointy parts. And I'm going to put outline them in barnyard red. And what that's going to do, you have to kind of do a like a almost a V because you want some of the points to stay cardinal red. And what that's going to do is make the ones that are barnyard red look like they're in back. You may have to come along with your um, cardinal red to make it a little more pronounced and you might even want to add a little of the lemonade yellow to the front points. You can do the same thing up here if you want to. And then we're going to make that a little pronounced. There that curve just like we did over here. And right along the opening we're going to add some of that barnyard red. It just makes it pop a little bit more, makes it a little bit more pronounced. So on either opening, on the either side of the opening, that's what I meant. Okay, and then some cardinal. We're going to sharpen up these points a little bit. If you want to add a little yellow to make them even more pronounced, you can do that. You can cover that up with the cardinal red once it dries. And then you'll have 
the appearance of points in back and in front. Does that make sense? Kind of? You might want to put some barnyard red right along in this section as well. Like up here, around the neck. I call it the neck of the pomegranate. I'm going to do that before I add the cardinal red to cover the um, lemonade highlights and then it'll blend together. Now I'm going to add the perils to the center and what I'm going to use is a cotton swab. And I'm going to actually put them, uh, start, start with barnyard red, then a little bit of the yellow, just a dot, and then cover them with the cardinal red. So the cardinal red is the last color. So all I do is I just kind of swirl it around, blot a little bit, and just there it is. And you can get a couple of stamps for each uh, dip. They can overlap if you'd like. Try not to get them like I did, just in a perfect line. So it's a little better if you go random and then come back and fill in however you want. So we're just going to stamp them and then um, let that dry and then we'll dot a little bit of yellow on each one. Now that the barnyard red is dried, I'm just going to dot with a liner just a tiny little bit, just wherever, it's just to make them look, um, well they will look a little bit more round when we get. You can actually do a little circle if you'd like, and I'm or just a dot, either way. If you've got some areas that look a little uh, rough because of the Q-tip, as I do, you can cover those up or not. It doesn't matter uh, too much. So you're just going to go ahead and... You don't have to do all of them, actually. You can just do here and there. But I kind of like them to all look like they've got a little bit of light reflecting off of them, so they look shiny. Okay, now with my liner and a little bit of carnal red, I'm going to smooth out some of the rough edges. You can color the highlight or not. It's up to you. Make it a little bit cleaner circle. And you see how where you've got some of the areas where the Q-tip the cotton swab did not completely coat um, with a, uh, the barnyard red. That works out well now because now we'll come along with the cardinal red and you wind up having different shades of red. So it's like you've shaded and highlighted without even trying. Thanks for joining me today for this pomegranate painting tutorial. I hope you stop by again or stop by my blog at muralmaker1.blogspot.com for a lot of other painting tutorials for holidays and every day. Thanks a lot.